Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. If you are coming from the previous episodes, uh, you know, thank you for the continued support. And if you are just landing on this video here in the middle of the season, um, I uh, suggest that you just go through and at least you know get a little bit caught up on some of the previous videos. We've gone ahead and created a sample travel application that has that abides by the MVVM architecture. We pass events around and data around to the correct location and provide a solid separation of concerns here within the app. So we um, we have done a, a whole lot up to this point and I am very excited to now introduce to you the Airbnb library or extension on the Recycler view called Epoxy. So Airbnb Epoxy, I'll go ahead and list uh, this GitHub repository in the um, in the description of the video. But let's see here, do we have? Yes. Okay. So this video, we're just going to kind of discuss what Air what uh, what Airbnb has built. Uh, I guess a little bit of why they built it and then we'll get into how we're going to use it to uplift our uh, implementation a little bit. So as you can see from the GitHub repository, um, there are active, they are actively committing on this uh, repository. So don't feel, um, I guess, scared to use this one. It seems to be extremely popular in the community and likely has even helped drive some of Google's decisions because of the design that they've come up with. Uh, possibly surrounding the Compose uh, UI framework that's coming out soon. Um, they have support for paging and, and have a whole lot of samples and, and code in here that you can obviously see. Uh, and their uh, README or, where is it, the pages, wherever they are, um, the wiki here is relatively extensive and you have you know a, plenty of documentation to actually look over it and um, find the info that you need. Okay, so let's just take a look here at this sample uh, uh, UI that they've kind of broken down for us. And I'll again go ahead and link this uh, Medium post in the description so that you can read through it entirely. But if you're familiar at all with the Airbnb app, hopefully some of this stuff starts to look familiar to you. Um, and if you're not, it's you know a, a simple way for uh, people to kind of connect and rent out different uh, apartments or houses or something like that to one another. So this UI that they've built here, you know, they have this header image, they have this information about the city or the location, um, they have a little guidebook, you know, clickable region here, then they have a popular homes carousel, right, that's a horizontally scrolling list of items, you know, specifically in a, in a vertically list, vertically scrolling list. Um, they got another carousel of I guess you know popular and then a different location within the neighborhood and then they have this like little bottom footer view um, you know to I don't know provide a little bit more action or call to action to the user so if we can think about the um, recycler view implementation of this because this entire screen scrolls here because it can obviously you know maybe there's five of these different areas um, so you're going to want to be able to handle scrolling because you can't guarantee it'll all fit on one screen. You know, this would kind of get a little complex, right? In the sense that you would need data to hold um, your header. Then you would need like maybe a flag or, or I don't know, some kind of decision-making process to tell you to, to load this view in after this view. And then you know you'll have a list of these popular homes, and then you know that it needs to go after this guidebook, and it needs to be horizontally scrolling. And then maybe there's another list of those homes that has a different header. So instead of popular homes, it says North End and has a little description. Um, and then you need to know to have a footer at the bottom of this, right? And so maybe they want two footers, three footers, or maybe they want five of these carousels, or maybe they want a view guidebook, and then a view tour book, and then a view. I don't know, some other thing, uh, you know, and so they want multiple of these view types. In the current recycler view implementation, um, you would need to define a new view type for each one of these little sections. You would need to figure out based on the view type where the data is at that moment in time or, you know, within your adapter class. And then you would need to create the right view holder 
uh, inject the right data into that view holder, have it bind, uh, you know, set up itself, uh, etc., and then handle all of these, you know, different interactions here, where this has a couple different buttons here. This one is a clickable region, the view guidebook. You have a see all button here. You might even be able to click on this home. You can clearly favorite or unfavorite a particular home. And then in the footer, you know, there's another call to action here about houseboats. Very interesting. Um, so what, what used to be a little bit of a headache, right? Maybe, um, you know, if we were to think one, two, three, four different types of, of views here, you know, that could easily grow to maybe 10 different view types. Uh, and so that's just even more logic that needs to be embedded into your um, into your recycler view, or sorry, into your adapter implementation. And trust me, it just gets way out of hand, uh, especially if you have to start doing any kind of math or, uh, you know, just just the management of all of that data can get extremely, extremely overwhelming and very complex. And then it might work. And then if you need to add one more view type, it's like absolute hell to try to get everything to work again. So we can see here, that, you know, as they go on and describe this, they have a header, they have a link, they have an undetermined number of neighborhood carousels and a filter suggestion uh, interstitial mixed. Oh, interesting. So this might be interstitial mixed within the carousels. And then here they're also mentioning a few other things you might want to show, you know, a loading indicator, an error message if there was a network is issue, a text row, a price disclaimer in some countries, right? So you can imagine, and if you've seen the application before, uh, it, it can get very, very overwhelming to actually build this dynamically, right? Which is the goal as the developer to be able to build something dynamically and kind of just you know, have full plug and plug and play control um, over the, the UI. So if we read this here, they talk about that it gives us eight different unique view types. Uh, we want it in a recycler view so that it scrolls. You know, setting up an adapter with this would be quite messy and it would be complicated with the different IDs, item counts, span counts, view holders, click listeners, etc. So they've gone ahead and created uh, an epoxy adapter, or I believe this is a little old, so it's called an epoxy controller now. But if we go ahead and take a look at the um, the implementation here, it's a bit more what they call composable, meaning the UI is directly impacted from the data. And while that might not be the best way to describe it in the sense that you could argue the same thing about a recycler view, um, it has a bit more of like an intuitive, a, a more like logical flow to it as opposed to in the recycler view, you know, you need to have all this data, you need to find out what view type goes where, at what position, and then match that data up, etc. So if we just go ahead and just even read through uh, their code here, it is um, it is a bit more... Uh, declarative, if you will, right? So it says header dot set city, and in their search data they have a city object. So you go ahead and set that. The guidebook row, which you imagine or which you remember, would be that. Um, we, they can say show if the data has a guidebook, right? Um, and then for all of our neighborhoods in there, they go ahead and add a carousel model for the particular neighborhood, which is again going to be an object that defines all of these, you know, uh, the title, the subtitle, the, the, the price, the different pictures, all of this information for every single one of them. Uh, and then we have a little loader that says show if there's more data to load, which again, with properly structured data, you know, between a uh, front end and back end, you can accomplish these things quite easily. Um, and then notify models changed is their um, their version of notify data set changed for a particular adapter. Um, and then you can kind of see here, so they have the header model, they have a city object that they go ahead and you know set. Um, and then in the bind function, which is called for you as you extend an epoxy model, uh, you need to then go ahead and like bind your UI. Um, and then, you know, here's a function that you can override to get the correct uh, layout file for that particular, essentially, view holder. 
Um, a very easy way to save state, so the user goes forward and comes back. Um, right, okay, so then here they have, you know, if you look at this, a relatively complex, yeah, I mean, look at this, right? I mean, that, that, there's a lot going on here between having this header, having this, having all this, you know, this little blurb here, this information, that, they got the Google Maps embedded in there, they got the check-in, check-out, the reviews, the guidebook, all of these, like, little things, another carousel, and then a button at the end to, to book the whole thing, right? So um, the idea here with their approach is that you can supply the adapter data that represents this entire screen, and then the adapter will take care of it. So let's, for instance, say that they had, as part of their logic in the adapter, uh, it checked the data to say, if there are reviews, you know, show the review section here. Uh, and then, you know, you can go ahead and calculate how many stars there are, whatever the case is. But, you know, when you go to one property that, uh, you know, has 54 reviews and an average of four stars, great, it shows up. But then you go to another property, let's say so something that someone just put up a week ago and it doesn't have any reviews. Well, the adapter is smart enough to say, oh, okay, well, we're only going to show this if the data is there, if there are reviews. So it, this entire row just wouldn't show up. Right, and so you can kind of extract that logic out into every single thing you see here, and it then just becomes your data completely drives your UI, and it's in a very, very condensed um, declarative approach that just makes life a whole lot easier for you than having to manage all the different kinds of uh, view types and, and where the data exists and, and making sure that you're not you know, getting index out of bounds errors and all that kind of stuff. No, you don't have to worry about that at all in the slightest. So, um, I have, I'm hoping that that made some sense to you guys. Uh, I think once we get our hands on the code a little bit here, you know, a lot of this is in uh, Java still because this library has been around for quite a while. However, they do have full Kotlin support um, and, you know, they're just going to, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can do to make our lives a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and jump into the code here um, in, in probably the next episode here and just show you how easy it is to plug and play and pull things out and, um, and, and uplift our implementation. And then this is going to be important because moving forward, we're going to then use epoxy and all of our other projects to um, just make our lives a bit easier. It handles all the animations, the drag and drop, the swipe to dismiss, everything. There's so, 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 so much that you can do here. They've really built out quite an amazing library. Um, so I'll tip my hat to them for sure. And I am excited to get hands on with you guys and uplift our own application. So I will catch you in the next one where we're going to go ahead and uh, update our code a little bit. And if that sounds exciting and interesting to you, please subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss any of the good content that's about to drop. So thanks again.